popping back some grasshoppers. I like vodka. <laughs> Hi, I'm Beryl, and the theme for today's episode is alcohol and food pairings. And what I mean by that is like, if you're gonna go out and get a drink, what is the most common food that you would have with said drink? The artist for today is named Shailendra, and I have never seen art like this before, paper cutting. He's actually a watchmaker, and this is kind of a side hobby of his. <laughs> the attention to detail truly boggles the mind. I'm gonna leave a link in the description so that you can check out some of his other amazing, amazing work. Okay, today's video has a sponsor. It's Bright Sellers. They are a wine subscription service. I'm trying to work with sponsors that align with the topics that I'm doing so it doesn't feel like fish out of water. So because today's video is about food and alcohol pairings, I thought Bright Sellers would be a great bond, a great addition, a great pairing. Oh, it was there the whole time because one of the things they do that I really like is include these cards that tell you what to pair the wine with that you get. Some of the pairings are cheeky, which is cute, like an at-home dance party or brunch on the patio, but there are actually some really interesting food pairings about types of cheeses or fish or meats or even kind of savory dishes to have with them. You go online, take a quiz, and you kind of go over what types of flavors you like, and then they send you wine that kind of fits your taste. Like other subscription boxes, the wines arrive at your door, and it's a way to explore and find new wines that you might not find yourself. If you use my code, you will get 60% off your first order of four bottles, which is a pretty great deal to be honest. And then you get the pairing cards and you can do your own pairing at home. Okay, let's start the video because I got very excited and reached out to more than the typical five of you because I just thought that this was such a cool topic and I was learning so many new things. So I just kept saying yes. We have a lot of alcohol to get through and crickets. You'll see. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ana Gerold. I'm from the city of Londrina in the state of Paraná, Brazil. The food and booze pairing I want to share is isca de frango with caipirinha. Isca de frango actually means chicken bait. Bait is the thing you use to fish, but it means also small pieces of something. Uh, in this case, chicken, but it also can be fish. It's very common here. You can have it any bar you go. Also, it's very important that you eat it with mayo, but you have to make the mayo. It's a very special thing that you have to do. <laughs> Caipirinha is a drink that is uh, from Brazil, it has been created here. The traditional one is made with cachaça, which is alcohol that is produced from cana de açúcar. That is the plant where sugar comes from. It's simply lime with sugar shredded, then you add cachaça and ice. Drinking is a very big part of Brazilian culture, and this de frango is a uh, food that you eat with uh, other people. Toast in my language we say saúde, which means literally health. There is a saying that if you drink before you toast, you won't get laid. <laughs> so when you have to drink, you say saúde. <laughs> I'm kind of having fried chicken flashbacks. But this one looks really good. Also, I have not had a caipirinha in a very long time. I thought it was super interesting marinating the chicken in lime juice. Also, making my own aioli. There was a lot of work involved in this one. Oh my god. This is so good. You can taste the lime in the chicken. It is so vibrant. Also yum, aioli. Oh my God, I've been transported. I'm on vacation. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> You're not ready for this. Oh 
my god, where am I? It's as though I'm in Brazil. <laughs> I got a green, I got a green screen. I got a green screen. Anyway, cachaça is amazing. The flavor of this is so specific. It doesn't taste like anything else. It's very delicious. These chicken strips also, I feel like this is elevated chicken fingers. I found this recipe from this girl online. The entire recipe is in Portuguese, but I felt like I was able to follow it. I'm gonna link the full video below. I'm just gonna have one more, uh, one more of these. Marinate your chicken in lime juice. It's so good. As far as a pairing goes, two things that individually taste really, really good, it's not surprising that if you put them together, they also taste good. Okay, next one. Hi, I'm Roberta and I'm from Bari in Italy. Today I'd like to talk to you about the aperitivo. An aperitivo is sort of a small meal consisting of drinks and snacks that is usually consumed before lunch or dinner. The most popular drinks for aperitivo are apero spritz and negroni, and the most commonly served snacks are olives, taragli, which are small crunchy bread rings, crisps and roasted peanuts. The first aperitivo was served in Turin in the 1700s, but it quickly became popular in the rest of the country. Nowadays you're bound to find the word aperitivo on the menus of uh, pretty much every single bar and cafe in Italy. I think that the aperitivo is an essential part of Italian culture as it includes drinks and foods originating from different regions in the country, so in a way it brings the whole nation together on the table. Here in Italy the most common way to make a toast is by saying alla salute, which means to health. I worked in the service industry for a while. Hey! <laughs> I think I've maybe had an Aperol spritz once before, maybe twice. It's not a drink that I often have. I had to buy Aperol for this video. I mean, it's absolutely delicious. It's not alcoholy tasting. It's very light, very fresh, fruity. So this is absolutely a drink that I can understand, like sitting outside, munching. <laughs> this entire spread of olives and peanuts and crackers to go with a cocktail like this, it's a recipe for disaster for me. I could just eat mindlessly. Olives are one of my favorite foods. I bought them without pits because I didn't really want to be spitting pits out on camera. You understand. This is an amazing combo. It's something that I'm not surprised by, but I'm very happy that I'm having. Hi, my name is M and I am a first-generation American living on Canarsie Lenape land, now known as Brooklyn, New York in the USA. My family is originally from Eastern Europe and I was raised in the Ashkenazi Jewish tradition. Ashkenazi Jews are a diaspora population who coalesced in the Holy Roman Empire around the end of the first millennium. The traditional language of the Ashkenazi Jews is Yiddish which is where the name for my pairing comes from. I'm talking about Leikach and Bromfen. Leikach is a rich and delicious honey cake, and Bromfen is generally an alcoholic spirit, commonly whiskey, vodka, or even Schlivovitz, which is a regional plum brandy. This combination is enjoyed on special occasions, religious holidays, and on the Sabbath, which we call the Shabbos. Shabbos and holiday meals are generally an elaborate affair, so both fish and meat are served. However, there's a custom where due to kosher dietary laws, one must never eat meat following fish without drinking first some alcohol in between the two courses. And what goes better with a shot of whiskey or vodka than a slice of spicy, deeply caramelly honey cake, which is also served especially on Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year to symbolize sweetness. And with a complex bromfen, my favorite being an aged single malt whiskey, it's such a delightful combination. Well, I don't have any leikach, but I always have some bromfen. So I'd like to toast to good life as we do in my culture. L'chaim.
my house smells like cloves and cake. I'm very surprised, first of all, at how good this turned out because I am absolutely not a baker. It's so soft. And also that recipe made a lot of cake. I have a lot of cake in my house right now. Oh my gosh. I thought that this cake was going to be incredibly sweet because of the amount of honey and sugar that went into the batter. It is not. It is beautiful. This is like a perfect cake. Okay, I'll have it with some whiskey now. This is actually a very beautiful pairing. Like the spice from the whiskey and the spice from the cake blends really, really well. I don't really know that much about Ashkenazi Jewish culture, but I thought it was really interesting to learn about having the cake mid-meal to help separate the courses and that you would have alcohol with that. And that made this whole episode for me like incredibly special, learning something that I didn't even know I didn't know, if that makes any sense. It's cool when you learn things that you didn't know you didn't know. Hi everyone, my name is Sara, I'm from Portugal, currently living in Switzerland. And today the combo I bring you is termosos and beer. Drinking is definitely part of our culture. We have some of the most famous wines in the world, like Alvarinho, which is a green gassy wine from up north, Porto wine, Madeira wine. I feel this pairing works really well together because I'll show you. There's a very particular way of eating termosos. So you see the bean? You first have to give it a bite like this, but not fully, just a little bite to break the skin. And then you just squeeze it and it goes to your mouth, like... And you keep the skin, but then you eat the bean. And it's really nice because the taste is kind of neutral. You can make it slightly salty, which even makes it better. And some coffee shops make it with garlic and coriander and a little bit of olive oil, which is always delightful, as you can imagine. In Portuguese, we don't have a specific word for food to go with drinks, but mostly they will bring you tomosos. Especially in my region, from near Lisbon, they will always bring you tomosos. In our language, people usually cheer with saúde, which means health, or most people actually just cheer with chin chin, which is the sound of the glasses going with each other, you know? Saúde! Okay, we are in Portugal with beer and lupini beans, or tremasos, tremasos. It does not roll off my tongue. I have never had of nor heard of a lupini bean. Wait, wait, what? You just bite it? Like, no. Oh, mmm. Oh, they're salty and kind of earthy. It's not that easy. Do I like those? Hmm, the beer helps. I'm gonna try them marinated. Hmm, I like them marinated. This is not my favorite. I see though how like sitting in a cafe, like these are something that you could mindlessly munch and I guarantee you put me in that position. Should we put me in that position? Okay, let me uh... I feel like I'm in a bar right now, you know, just chit-chatting with my friends like, oh yeah, yeah, how was the day? Yeah? You did what? God damn it. <laughs> you saw him? You shouldn't have called him. No. Because he's bad news. Yeah, no, it, I could do it. It checks out. Hello, my name is Mariana and I live in Mexico City. And today I'm going to talk to you about uh, how we pair a typical drink that we consume here in Mexico that it's called mezcal. So 
something like this. So the way we pair uh, mezcal in Mexico is with orange slices, just like this, and we sprinkle them with sal de gusano, so it's basically crushed hot peppers, salt and crushed worms. We can also pair it or eat bugs like grasshoppers that we call chapulines. And basically what we do is we sprinkle a little bit of sal de gusano or worm salt in the orange slices. It's salty and it's also spicy. So this is typically consumed in Oaxaca, which is a state that's in the south of Mexico, but it has popularized all over the country. I'm sure you're thinking that eating worms or grasshoppers is a little bit gross or just plain weird, but mm, they're really delicious. They have um, like this uh, earthy flavor. They're very complex. So I think you shouldn't be scared to try new things. We say salud. So this goes for all of you. Salud. Okay, I have mezcal and some chapulinas, also known as grasshoppers, and oranges with worm salt or sal de gusano. One thing that I learned about mezcal is that you're supposed to drink at room temperature. It is so hot in New York City right now, I imagine that this is actually quite warm though. <laughs> and you don't really wanna take shots of it, it's more of a sipping beverage, unlike tequila that maybe traditionally you think of it as a shot. Ooh, this is kinda nice. Let's start with the salt. Whoa, it's like spicy and really sweet at the same time. That is a beautiful pairing. It doesn't mask the mezcal, it like enhances the best parts of it and the sweetness of the orange and it's juicy and my whole mouth feels just like kind of wet right now. <laughs> this might be my favorite. I've had chapulinas before when I was in Mexico. I've never had them just plain like this. Kind of like crunchy, like a peanut without all the bite. I'm like popping back some grasshoppers. They just taste crunchy. If I'm telling the truth, I could munch on these easier than the lupini beans from um, Portugal. <laughs> Wow, this worm salt though, I hold this whole plan that I was gonna green screen myself to like get in the mood, but like, I don't need to get in the mood. I'm happy sitting here in my living room having grasshoppers, mezcal, and oranges right now. But it feels good. Hi, I'm Jędrzej. And I'm Kasia. We are from Poland. But we currently live in the Netherlands. So the uh, food and booze pairing that is most popular in Poland is vodka with various cold small foods that we call zakonski. Uh, those are usually uh, various pickled vegetables. Can also be other things such as bread with lard. Um, and one important thing, the vodka has to be very, very cold. Drinking is definitely a massive part of Polish culture and um, the cheaper is often the better, especially if you're a student. Up to a certain point. Vodka really works really well with these sorts of um, pickled or, or fatty foods. I guess that it just really kind of cuts through the strong taste. So this kind of Zakonski culture used to be uh, a much bigger thing for our like uh, grandparents or parents' generation. Yeah, pickles used to be like a household staple in Poland. Every grandmother, every mother used to make them. My mother still makes them. Oh yeah, my, and, my parents still make them, yeah. <laughs> and we, Giant we, jars. And uh, in a weird way, it makes me connect with being Polish. Yeah. The, um, the drinking and eating, uh, it's used to create bonds. You'd sit uh, at a table for hours, you'd eat and uh, drink and talk. Sorry. Here we have 
pickles. We have some vodka. Na zdrowie. Na zdrowie. Mm. The memories. <laughs> Uh, vodka and pickles. This is definitely not the first time I've had vodka on the internet and not even the first time I've had it on my channel. I like vodka. <laughs> even though this is a Polish combination, this is also very similar to combinations in Russia and when I lived in Russia, I was a big fan of the pickle chaser. It works really well. Oof. All right, we're gonna do pickle. It's so good and it's so perfect together. Sweet pickled garlic. I don't know if any of you have had this before, but sweet pickled garlic is, first of all, it's incredibly dangerous because you can easily eat like 10 garlic cloves, but it's, oh, it's so good. Oh my goodness. It's not garlic at this point. It's something better. I think that this is a great combo because vodka is known for having this super harsh taste and the vinegariness or like the fermentedness of the pickles cures it. So yeah, it was great. Okay, we're at the last one. And just to let you know, for this last one, I'm not gonna be cooking it, it's too complicated. I am going on a little journey to pick it up. So you guys can come with me while we learn about the combo. Hi, I'm Colleen. I'm originally from Metro Manila, um, but I currently live in Indiana, USA. A common pairing in the Philippines is sisig and beer. Sisig uh, is originally from the province of Pampanga and was invented by a lady named Aling Dusin. She made sisig out of the pig head and cheeks and chicken liver. In the Philippines, no part of the pig goes unused. And um, it is cooked and served in a sizzling plate. In our country, the special word for foods that go with drinks is pulutan. Um, it literally means something like you pick up and eat. I would say that sisig is like probably the number one, if not the only um, dish that you would pair with alcohol. And it pairs really well with warm rice as with any other savory foods. How do say toast in our language? Um, Tagay! So, <laughs> Okay, final pairing, Sisig and beer. How about that I found a place called the House of Sisig? I love that. Oh my god, yum. Ooh, it's spicy. The guy asked me if I wanted it spicy. I said yes. It's fatty and spicy and crunchy. Oh yeah, I already know this is good beer food. Tagai. I mean, the beer just like cuts the fat, cools your mouth from the spice. So crunchy. This is honestly very satisfying. There's no way I could have made this at home. I don't think. I think for people who've never tried seasick, the thing I would say is like, don't be scared of the ingredients because there's so much flavor and so much amazing texture in this. It's honestly, it's, it's a masterpiece, this dish. Yeah. I wanted to know some other toasts in other languages and a lot of you submitted some. I'm just gonna start with my favorite toast. To lying, cheating, and stealing. If you're gonna lie, lie for a friend. If you're gonna cheat, cheat death. And if you're gonna steal, Steal someone's heart. Hello, my name is Alexandra. I come from Austria, and to toast we say, Prost, dass die Guten nicht verrost. Felicitaciones! Salud! Hello, my name is Vien, and I am Vietnamese. And in Vietnamese, you give a toast by saying, Mo Kai Ba Yo, 
and that just means one, two, three, in. So, Mokai Ba Yo. Hi, I'm Randy from Fort Worth, originally from Beirut, in Lebanon. When we say cheers, we say Soha. Hi, I'm Ashmita. I live in Mauritius, and to toast, we say cheers, Sante, or Ting Ting. Cheers, big ears. Hi, this is Likad from Karnataka, India, and for toast, we say Abhinandanigaru. So that's it! I know this was a longer episode. I hope you made it to the end. I will see you all next week. Ta-ta.